Yo, what is going on, Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict. And today, if you didn't already hear what I said yesterday in yesterday's video, we're going to be having some mock drafts with you guys as the other participants. We're not using CPUs. We are using all real people. These are all subscribers and followers on my Twitter account here. So if you want to be in a future mock draft in a video, all you have to do is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter because I will be sending out a tweet a few times a week saying that the first how many ever people to DM me will get their spot in a mock draft and get to be in a video, not only being in the mock draft video, but also getting some analysis on their picks and getting a team grade at the very end of the draft because I will be grading each and every team at the end of the draft. So if you want to be in a future video, then all you have to know is just be following me on Twitter and subscribe to me right here on YouTube. And if you see my tweet fast enough and you DM me, you will be in one of my mock draft videos. With that being said, let's get right into this mock draft. Okay guys, so it's my pick. Christian McCaffrey goes first, then Saquon, then Zeke. Pretty standard right there. Zeke or Alvin Kamara is a toss up for most people. This person took Zeke. He's gonna keep it easy for me and take Alvin Kamara. I love the fourth overall pick because you get one of the four top running backs. Obviously, usually not Saquon or Christian McCaffrey, but you still get Zeke or Kamara and you get a solid second round pick. You get a better second round pick than any of the other top three picks. So I do like the fourth pick a lot for sure. We're gonna go with Alvin Kamara. He should have some positive touchdown regression. He got really unlucky in that category last year, and there's no reason why he wouldn't see positive touchdown regression here. Michael Thomas had a career year. He's not gonna duplicate those numbers this season. Alvin Kamara is gonna have a bigger role in this offense this season, and he was dealing with some injuries last season. That should not happen again this season. So, Alvin Kamara right here. All right, so it is our pick again, and there's a 30 second timer, but I am going to be pausing it at all of my picks so I can give you guys analysis. So if you ever join one of my mock drafts, just know I'm not pausing it to give myself an advantage. I'm pausing it to give some analysis. So Dalvin Cook goes, Michael Thomas, Patrick Mahomes goes very early. This is not super flex. No reason to take Mahomes that early. Bad pick right there. Joe Mixon ahead of Derrick Henry and ahead of Josh Jacobs, not a good pick there. Tyree Kill ahead of Devontae Adams, I don't like that. That was very early, I'd much rather have Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry goes, Austin Eckler goes early. It's bold, it could pay off, but I wouldn't take him ahead of Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs, Nick Chubb, Devontae Adams, all good picks. Kenyon Drake, don't like him this year. Same with Julio Jones, but they're gonna go early no matter what, that just is gonna happen. Miles Sanders, CEH, CEH goes a little earlier than he normally does, but still a decent pick. Mike Evans and Godwin. I would take Godwin over Mike Evans because he was better last season. And now with Tom Brady, who loves throwing to his slot receiver, there's no reason why Godwin wouldn't outperform Mike Evans. And I also don't like how that team went wide receiver, wide receiver. He's gonna find himself being in a very, very difficult situation in the third round especially if guys like Chris Carson are not available. And same with the other team who took Tyree Kill and Julio Jones. Not a fan of either of those picks. So it is our pick at tight end. Travis Kelsey is there. That is a decent pick. Hopkins is there. I don't normally take Hopkins because he is on a new team and on a team that spreads the ball a lot, on a team that loves to run four wide receiver sets. But Hopkins fell later than he normally does. At running back, we also have Aaron Jones, who I think is a decent pick, but in the third round, I do think that there probably will be some decent value at running back. I'm fine with Le'Veon Bell and Chris Carson there, so I'm not sure if we're going to take Aaron Jones there. Travis Kelsey is completely fine. He's the best of his position. There's no doubt about that, so it is very tough. You could go with Aaron Jones. You could go with DeAndre Hopkins. You could go with Travis Kelsey. You could honestly go with any of those picks, but there is a chance George Kittle is available at my next pick. Unlikely, but there's a chance. 
I think this is a little too early for Travis Kelsey. And between Hopkins and Aaron Jones, I'm just really low on DeAndre Hopkins. I know he fell, but I don't think you should use a second round pick on him. I really don't. There's too much risk there. So we are going to go with Aaron Jones. But if you want to go with Hopkins or if you want to go with Kelsey, I think that is still fine. And I understand why you would go with those picks. So we're going to take Aaron Jones here. You can never have too many running backs. You seriously never can, especially when they are pass catching backs like Aaron Jones. Okay, so it's our pick again. Let's pause the draft and do some analysis. So Hopkins and Kenny Galladay go. Both of those are okay picks. Even though I don't really love Hopkins, I do understand that he has been producing at an elite level for so many years. So that's okay, I guess. Galladay, okay, but still kind of early. Travis Kelsey goes, love that pick. And it looks like this team really has a diverse group of players. He has a solid running back, the best running back in the league for fantasy football, Christian McCaffrey, best tight end in the league, Travis Kelsey, and then a solid PPR wide receiver in Adam Thielen. A lot of vacated targets there, so he should get a ton of targets. Lamar falls a little bit. I still don't love that pick, but he did fall, so it's okay. Le'Veon Bell goes a little earlier than he normally does. This is a Jets fan, so that does make a little bit of sense, so I can't blame him there. Should have expected that coming from him. So now it's our pick. Looking at running back, there is a legitimate chance that Chris Carson falls to us at our next pick. I don't think it'll happen, but there's probably a 10, 15, 20% chance that it does happen because there are a lot of running backs left on the board. There usually are not this many. At wide receiver, Juju Smith-Schuster, I love him. I don't really love Odell or Amari Cooper. I like Cup, but not as much as Juju, and DJ Moore is really solid. It would be between DJ Moore and Juju for me. At tight end, Travis Kelsey is there. Now, we could use another running back because you can never have too many running backs, but Chris Carson actually might be at our next pick. Once again, don't think it'll happen, but there is a chance. And if he's not, David Montgomery has a solid chance of being there, and then Kareem Hunt and Cam Akers could easily be there at our fifth round pick, no doubt about it. And we already have two solid running backs, so I don't think that we need to take a third one as much as we do a tight end or wide receiver, especially considering that George Kill is available, Debo Samuel got injured, and I did a video on the entire breakdown there of his injury and how it'll affect him and the rest of the 49ers players. And if he doesn't start the season, or if he starts out the season showing that he's being affected by his injury, Kittle is going to be a monster. Kittle fell a little bit to me, so we are going to take Kittle here. We have two really, really solid running backs, and there's a lot of value at wide receiver in the fourth round, like Calvin Ridley if he falls. Robert Woods usually ends up around where I'm drafting in the fourth round, so I'm fine with those wide receivers. I love Kittle. We're going to take him there. I don't always take tight ends early because there's so much value late into the game, but when there's not a ton of running back or wide receiver value up here that I like, there is a reason to draft George Kittle. All right, guys, so it's my pick again. Oops, don't want to end the draft. Pause draft. That would have been awful if I ended the draft. Okay, so tight end, we don't need one. We already have Kittle. We're happy with that. At wide receiver, Juju falls to us. I really like that right there. At running back, Unfortunately, Cam Akers goes very early. That's pretty strange. Kareem Hunt's still there, and Kareem Hunt or Darius Geis should be there at my next pick. So I do think that we can certainly wait on a running back, especially because the team right after us already has two running backs, so he might not even take a running back. The other two teams in front of us only have one running back, so I'm sure that both of them will take one running back. But I'm pretty sure that Hunt or Geis will be there at our next pick. And looking at the wide receiver value, I absolutely love it. Juju and Calvin Ridley, I like them both. Woods is solid too and should be there by my next pick. I really have to decide if I want to take a running back with my next pick at this point because I love that wide receiver value and it is very intriguing. We might take a running back, we might take a wide receiver at our next pick. It kind of depends who's there, but with this pick, I love Juju. I like Calvin Ridley a lot too, but Juju fell very, very late. 
he usually goes earlier, so we are going to take him here. He's on what should be a much better offense than last year. Big Ben loves Juju. They have that chemistry together. Juju is extremely talented, and he's in his prime now. He is due for an incredible year, so we are going to take Juju Smith-Schuster with this pick. All right, guys, so it's my pick again. We will go pause the draft, not end the draft. Pause draft. There we go. So after we took Juju, Robert Woods, Calvin Ridley, Mark Ingram, Raheem Moster, Mark Andrews, and Devin Singletary. Devin Singletary is going a little early. He's extremely, extremely good and efficient, but there is a little bit of competition there. Zach Moss is there, and I do think he's a pretty talented running back. I do think that he will certainly take some carries away from Devin Singletary, especially at the goal line. He is a bulldozer, and he is very good at the goal line. Robert Woods and Calvin Ridley both go, so those were the receivers that I really, really wanted. A.J. Brown is there, and he's the only one who would be worth taking. He is risky, and we have a very safe receiver in Juju Smith-Schuster, so we certainly could take A.J. Brown, but McLaurin might be there at our next pick, and at the very worst, Devontae Parker should certainly be there, and I'm happy with him. But Kareem Hunt and Darius Geis are both really, really good. Darius Geis is a little riskier. He probably has more potential to be an RB1, just because if he doesn't get injured, then there's a very good chance he's a three down back. We can't say the same thing with Kareem Hunt, but Kareem Hunt has a secure role. He's not injury prone like Darius Geis seems to be, and he's just a much safer player, and we know that he is elite. We've seen him produce elite numbers year in and year out. So we're gonna take a safer guy who can easily back up Aaron Jones or Kamara if they go down, or when they have buys and everything. So let's take Kareem Hunt with this pick. Kareem Hunt on our roster, super excited to add him to the team. He can be a solid flex if we need him to, and he can easily back up any of our running backs if anything were to happen to them. All right, it is our pick again. We are gonna go pause the draft and see what happened since our last pick. So, since our last pick, right after we took Kareem Hunt, Tyler Lockett, DJ Shark, AJ Brown all went, and Cortland Sutton, four wide receivers back to back. AJ Brown fell quite a bit, so I would like him at that pick. I think that that pick was a phenomenal pick. Cortland Sutton goes. I think he's tremendously talented, but there's a lot of competition in Denver for sure. Zach Ertz, AJ Green. I'm fading A.J. Green, especially when you have guys like Keenan Allen and Terry McLaurin who are much safer and have just as much upside. Keyshawn Vaughn goes extremely early. Not a good pick at all. Keyshawn Vaughn is not going to be the starter on this team. Ronald Jones is so much better, and he wasn't taken at that guy's pick. He was available. He could have taken Ronald Jones. Ronald Jones is going to be the starter. Keyshawn Vaughn's college numbers were heavily inflated by a few games against awful defenses. Terry McLaurin, love that pick. Dobbins, Ronald Jones, both solid picks. Prescott, Wilson, and Kyler all go. Decent right there. Nothing to complain about there. Hayden Hurst goes pretty early. Too early for my liking. He could have waited on Hayden Hurst for sure. And Cooks goes. That's a little early for him. I don't like him that early just because we don't know what his role is going to be in this offense. Now, Darius Geis is still there. Unfortunately, my wide receivers who I really wanted, Terry McLaurin and DJ Shark, are both gone. But it's no worries because Darius Geis is there who I really, really like. I only have one wide receiver, so do I wait? Yes, I absolutely wait because you know what? Devontae Parker will probably be there, and if he's not, Michael Gallup and or Tyler Boyd will be there without question. So... People are going to wonder why I'm taking Darius Geis considering I already have three solid running backs. But you know what? You can never have too many running backs. And there's plenty of solid wide receivers available. I'm fine starting Michael Gallup. I'm fine starting Devontae Parker. They're very reliable and they both have wide receiver one upside. So we're going to take Darius Geis because if this were a real draft and a real league, we could easily be trading Kareem Hunt or Darius Geis as long as they are solid this year. We could trade them for a solid wide receiver 
if we really needed one. So Darius Geis is our pick, and I really like him right there. I'm very happy with him, considering that we got him in the late sixth round. All right, it's our pick again. Let us go pause this draft and see what happened in those last few picks. So since we were gone, we keep getting extremely unlucky. And you know what? This is the problem with doing these mock drafts with people who follow me on Twitter, because since we were gone, Darren Waller, went. he went very late. I like that pick a lot, actually. I would prefer him over Hayden Hurst for sure. T.Y. Hilton goes, not a huge fan of him, but he fell later than he normally does. Tyler Boyd went, not a fan of taking him ahead of Gallup and or Parker, but it still is a decent pick because I like Tyler Boyd. Watson goes, that's fine. Gallup and Parker, I wanted both of them, and I'm sure they both knew that I wanted him. They got them right before I picked. This is the problem with doing these drafts with people who consume my content because they know exactly who I like and then they start to like the players who I like and they keep taking them right before me. I can't stress this enough. It is so annoying when this kind of stuff happens, but you know what, it's all good because I'm still glad that I get to do these drafts with people who are watching my content. But unfortunately, all the wide receivers who we like are gone. So we probably should have taken Gallup or Parker with our last pick, but it's okay because you know what? In a real draft where not everyone is just watching my content, I probably would have gotten one of them available here. See, Michael Gallup and Tyler Boyd are going much later than Diggs and Brown and Jarvis Landry, but they didn't care. They wanted to take them right in front of me, but it's all right. So... I do like Edelman and Marvin Jones down there. I'm debating if I should take Marvin Jones because Marvin Jones is my top wide receiver available. But do I think that they'll be taken before my next pick? There's a good chance that they're going to be taken. I'm going to be mad if someone takes them because whoever takes him probably knows that I love him and they're just trolling me at this point. So I don't feel confident in my wide receivers. I have to take a risky wide receiver, Stephon Diggs. He could be a wide receiver one, but he could be absolutely atrocious. We really don't know. But at this point, since everyone feels like just taking all of my players, he's the only guy left. I'm okay with Diggs right here, but I would have rather have Gallup or Boyd or Parker. But you know what? This is the downside of drafting with people who know your sleepers so well. I'm just hoping that Marvin Jones is available at my next pick, or at least Julian Edelman or Darius Slayton, because they're both okay picks as well. All right, it is our pick again. Let us pause the draft, double checking that we are not clicking end draft because that would seriously be a disaster. All right, so since our last pick, which was Stefan Diggs, we have seen a lot of running backs go. Alexander Madison, Jordan Howard, Sony Michelle, James White, who I really, really like. He has a very safe target share, including carries as well. So I really like him. He's going to be used a lot in this offense. This team is going to rely on the running backs because they have Jarrett Siddham, who does not have much NFL experience. Tariq Cohen goes. He has produced year in and year out. He seems like a risky player, but he has produced every single year. So at this point, he's safe. Matt goes. He pretty much needs Jonathan Taylor to get injured in order to pay off. And even if that happens, Naheem Hines is still there to take the third downs. So Mac does not have that much upside. Zach Moss goes a little earlier than he should. Matt Breida goes. I like that pick. He should go ahead of Jordan Howard because Matt Breida should be used as a pass catching back. And we can't say the same thing about Jordan Howard and the carries should be a 50-50, maybe 60-40 split in Jordan Howard's favor. But now it's our pick, and at wide receiver, Deontay Johnson's there, who's been getting too much hype, but he did fall a little bit to me, but I still think it's a little too early to take him because I love Marvin Jones. He was so good last year when he was playing. He finished as the wide receiver 28 when Matt Stafford missed half of the games and when Marvin Jones missed three games. He was the wide receiver 28. That is like the worst case scenario. And now he's going as like the wide receiver 40. It makes no sense. I will wait for someone to explain to me why he is going as the wide receiver 40 
it makes no sense. We're going to take Marvin Jones. We could wait and hope that he's there. Normally, I'd do that if I had some decent wide receivers, but we only have two wide receivers, and I don't really like Stephon Diggs. So at this point, I just need to secure him, and we're probably going to take another wide receiver with our next pick. I'm looking at Julian Edelman and Darius Slayton, as well as Deontay Johnson, but I doubt he's even going to be there. So let's resume the draft, and we shall take Marvin Jones Jr., who I absolutely love this season. Really happy with that pick. Super glad that no one took him because I really thought that someone was going to snag him from me considering how this draft has been going already. All right, is our pick again. Let's go pause the draft so we can do a quick recap of what just happened. So ever since our last pick, which was a little bit of a reach on Marvin Jones, but I'm completely happy with it. Damian Williams goes, he's okay. I think he is possibly an RB1 if he's a starting running back on that team. He's not going to start off the season as a starter because that's CEH who they just drafted with their first round pick. But if CEH goes down, I think Damian Williams is probably an RB1, at the very least an RB2. If you saw what he did last season with Mahomes on the field and with Damian Williams actually starting, he was averaging like 16, 17, maybe 18 points per game. It was tremendous. Sure, he's completely reliant on an injury to CEH, but at this point, there's no running backs that are safe without an injury. That's just not going to happen in the late eighth round. Deontay Johnson, Darius Slayton both go. I like both of those picks. Darius Slayton does have some competition, but he is very talented, and as long as he plays more snaps than he did last season, I think Darius Slayton could be phenomenal. Deontay Johnson, as long as he beats out James Washington for that wide receiver two role, I think Deontay Johnson could be a tremendous pick there. Henry Ruggs goes a little early. I do think there's a little too much competition in that Raiders offense, but Henry Ruggs still does have some potential, I guess, but I just think it's a little too early to take him ahead of guys like CeeDee Lamb or Julian Edelman. Tevin Coleman goes, he's okay as long as Raheem Mostert gets hurt. I guess Tevin Coleman has some potential, but I don't really want to rely on an injury, and I don't think Tevin Coleman has as much potential as Damian Williams if Raheem Mostert gets injured versus Damian Williams if CEH gets hurt. Aaron Rodgers goes, that's a decent pick. It is time to sort of start looking at quarterbacks for us, but we don't need to take one yet because there's still some guys available at quarterback, such as Matt Ryan, Josh Allen. We can wait a little while. For us, it's really just between wide receivers at this point, not any running backs worth taking. And CeeDee Lamb is risky, but I do think that Julian Edelman is very safe and we just need a solid wide receiver that we can count on at this point. So we're gonna take Julian Edelman. We don't have as many wide receivers as we'd like. So I think that taking Julian Edelman as a safe player who we can count on if we need to start him for a few weeks, I think that's a great pick. And we can count on him to be used in this offense because he was always used with Tom Brady because Brady loved to throw those short passes to Julian Edelman and Stidham is the same way. He might not be as good as Brady, but he does like throwing shorter passes, and Edelman should be perfect in that role. So I like that Edelman pick right there. All right, it's our pick. Time to go pause the draft for, what is this, the 10th time? Gets a little repetitive, but I got to give you guys that expert analysis on a lot of these picks. So Higby goes right after my pick. Love Higby. They are going to use a lot of two tight end sets this season, and Higby is going to be used a lot. He looked really good at the end of last season, and I really, really like his potential for this season. Justin Jefferson goes a little earlier than I would like to take him. Sure, he has potential, but I'm not quite sure how he's going to be used in that Minnesota offense. Some other guys who I like are Jalen Rager of the Philadelphia Eagles, who they drafted. This is a little earlier than he normally goes, I think, but he does have a lot of potential. There's not a ton of competition in that offense, so he does have a pretty clear path to being the wide receiver one in that offense. It's not going to be necessarily easy, but there is certainly a chance, and I think that he should easily be able to be the wide receiver two. 
Josh Allen goes, I like him. It might be time for us to take a quarterback because quarterbacks are coming to an end here. There's only a few left who I'm okay with taking. CeeDee Lamb goes, I like him there. I'd rather have him over Jalen Rieger, but I do understand that some people don't like CeeDee Lamb as much, but I think CeeDee Lamb is going to have a really good season. He is going to get a lot of targets. He could be 80, 90, even close to 100 targets this season. There's going to be a lot of targets to go around in that offense. Noah Fant, I like him. A lot of potential this season, so I think that is a very good pick. Now, running back, don't like anyone there. Quarterback, Matt Ryan, Wentz, Stafford, like any of them. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to wait for our 11th round pick and then take one there because three quarterbacks aren't going to go in these next six picks, so we'll wait there, but we probably are going to take a quarterback with our next pick. So at wide receiver, I like Pittman. Crowder's okay. He's safe, but I think Pittman has more upside here. Shepard's safe, but not a ton of upside. Same with Renfro. Harry is a very safe player, and we have two more bench spots, but I probably only want to use one more of our bench spots on a wide receiver because I think we'd either want to use our other bench spot on another quarterback or on a running back because we still should probably get one more running back. So I guess we'll have to decide between Pittman and Nikhil Harry. So I think that Michael Pittman probably has a more secured role and has a little more potential than Harry. So we're gonna take Pittman with this pick, but maybe we'll even take Nikhil Harry later into this draft. So we'll see how that goes. I don't think that I'll take another wide receiver, but maybe we will. But all I know right now is that I'm happy with Michael Pittman at this pick. We have another wide receiver and I am completely fine with that because I know that either Matt Ryan, Wentz, or Stafford will be there at our next pick. And even if they're not for some reason, we still have Locke and Big Ben there who I'm still okay with. But ideally, I would like Stafford, Wentz, or Ryan. Preferably Stafford or Ryan. All right, it's our pick. This is going to be a pretty important pick because we are deciding who our starting quarterback is. So let's go see who's available. But first, let's just do a quick recap of what happened. Only one quarterback went. Very happy with that. Matt Ryan. I like him, but there still are two other quarterbacks who I like. So that's okay. Hunter Henry went. It's okay. Not targeting a tight end right now. I want another quarterback. And other than that, carry on is okay, but he hasn't done anything in the last two years. And now they drafted Swift. So I think he's certainly in a time share. Chase Edmonds is purely a backup to Kenyon Drake, but we saw he has potential if he ends up being the starter for any reason, whether he completely outperforms Kenyon Drake or Kenyon Drake just goes down. Crowder, pretty safe player. I don't think he's going to absolutely break out, but he's pretty safe. And Deshaun Jackson is pretty risky. I'm not a fan of him. He should be probably the third string wide receiver on this offense. So at quarterback, the last two players who I really like are Wentz and Stafford. They both have injury concerns, but not really by me, because if you listen to any medical expert out there, most of them will say Carson Wentz just has gotten really unlucky, and Stafford's injury is not something that should affect him this upcoming season. The only thing is, no medical expert is saying that Wentz is definitely not injury prone. They're just saying that there's no evidence that he is. He still could be injury prone. Stafford most likely isn't. He is a warrior. He's always fought through all these injuries, and he hasn't gotten injured as frequently as Carson Wentz has. Plus, I do think that Stafford has more solid targets than Wentz does, and they have an awful defense, and they're just going to love to throw the ball everywhere. So I like Stafford here. You could go Wentz, and I could not fault you at all for that. I think Wentz is still a solid pick, but for me, Stafford is the right pick here. So we are going to go with Stafford, and let's see who is available at our next pick. All right, since our last pick, two more quarterbacks went, so I am very glad that I took Stafford with that pick and didn't wait one more round because if I did, 
whoever took Drew Locke likely would have taken Stafford and both Wentz and Stafford would have been gone and even though I'm okay with Locke and Big Ben as my starting quarterback I much prefer Stafford starting for me. So since then we had a lot of tight ends go. Austin Hooper, Jonu Smith, Mike Jacecki, and Jared Cook all went. I think all of them are okay but I do think that Jacecki and Jonu Smith are better picks than Hooper and Jared Cook when they go later so I think that those teams could have waited on Jacecki and Jonu Smith because they probably would have been available in the next or maybe even two rounds from when they took them. Looking at our roster, we have one, two, three, four, five wide receivers and three, four running backs. So I want to use one of my bench spots on a tight end. So we can either have six wide receivers and four running backs or five of each. And even though I do like my running backs more than my wide receivers, running backs are a little tougher to predict success from and they get injured a little more. So I do think that as long as there is some value here, I would like to take a running back. So I think that Carlos Hyde's okay, but he's purely just banking on Chris Carson getting injured. But what do you expect from anyone down here? In the 12th round, there's no one who's a starter no matter what. That just doesn't happen. Damian Harris is a decent pick. There are a lot of running backs in this offense, but I do think that he's on a Patriots offense, so you never know. He could just all of a sudden start getting used a ton. And Sonny Michelle has a long injury history, so if he goes down, which is very likely, Damian Harris could easily be a starter in this offense. A.J. Dillon, there's a lot of competition in Green Bay, but they drafted A.J. Dillon pretty high, so they clearly want to use him. There's not exactly anyone here who I much prefer over anyone else, but I think that Carlos Hyde just has a more secured role if no injuries happen to anyone else. And if an injury happens to Chris Carson, Carlos Hyde certainly does have a pretty solid role in this offense. He's not purely banking on an injury to Chris Carson, but that certainly will help him a ton. But if no injuries happen, to Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, no injuries happen to any of the Patriots running backs, and no injuries happen to Chris Carson, then I think that Carlos Hyde will be scoring more points than Damian Harris and A.J. Dillon. So I like Carlos Hyde there. Let's just take a look at the receivers available. So it looks like Nikhil Harry hasn't even been taken. Oh no, he has been taken, right? Yeah, he was taken. So once again, these people watch my videos and follow me on Twitter so they know exactly who I like. So they took Harry, no worries there though. But now there's no one who I really like at wide receiver. So we're certainly gonna take a running back unless there's a tight end who I love more than everyone else. And yes, there is Dallas Goddard. I love him more than everyone else here. Hawkinson is risky and has a lot of potential, but I sort of just want someone to back up Kittle for if he ever goes down or when he's on a bye. I don't need a risky tight end like Hawkinson. I just need a safe guy like Dallas Goddard. And even though, yes, I would like Carlos Hyde, I think that I'd much rather secure Dallas Goddard here. So for that reason, we are going to take Dallas Goddard to back up George Kittle for when or if he goes down and during his bye week because every team has a bye. So there is at least one week where George Kittle will not be playing. All right, it's our pick again. That was quick. And I know you guys aren't seeing the other players being drafted, but I'm telling you, it was quick. I'm glad that these people are taking pretty quick to pick. The clock time is 30 seconds, but these guys recently have been taking only 10, 15 seconds. So that is awesome. So since our last pick, Three wide receivers went in a row. Sammy Watkins, Curtis Samuel, Hunter Renfro. This late in the draft, I think they're both, I think all of them are good picks. Watkins is on Kansas City, so therefore he automatically has potential. Curtis Samuel could be the wide receiver too behind DJ Moore on this offense. And Renfro was very, very good last year. If you actually watched him, he looked good. I don't think that he is going to be used as much as he should be. But if he is, he certainly has some solid potential. Now, we have one more bench spot. 
we have to decide, do we want that to be a wide receiver or a running back? Carlos Hyde is still there, and I already talked about him last round. I like Carlos Hyde more than the other guys there, so we are going to take Carlos Hyde with this pick. He definitely is pretty much relying on Chris Carson to get hurt, but if he doesn't, he still probably he still has touchdown potential each week because he is big. He's a bulldozer. He is a good goal line back, so he could put up a few points each week, even with Chris Carson playing, and I think he's a little safer than the other guys available. All right, guys, we are down to the last two picks. Defense and kicker are about to go for us, and I'm glad to see that these people didn't draft defenses super early. The first defense appears to be Baltimore in the early 12th round, and I think that is a fair price for Baltimore defense. I think that's fine. I think it's good that they didn't draft them in the ninth round like the CPU will do sometimes, so that's very good. But now let's look at the kickers and defenses available. We have the Bills, we have the Chargers, we have the Vikings. I think the Bills are by far the best there because one, I think they have the best defense there, and two, they play in a very, very weak division, and I don't think this division is going to be putting up a lot of points against the Bills. Plus, the Bills like to run the ball, and they're going to have a slow-paced offense. So even for when they do play against good offenses, they're not going to have as many drives as most other teams would. Looking at kicker, I'm probably not going to take a kicker ahead of a defense. Yeah, Zane Gonzalez, Jake Elliott, Koo, Fairbairn, Gould, they're all fine. But Buffalo defense is definitely better than all the kickers there. Normally, I would pause, but I'm going to do this in less than 30 seconds. So, kickers who I like are on solid offenses, fast-paced offenses, but not super, super elite offenses because otherwise they score too many touchdowns. We want field goals. And looking at who is available, we have Fairbath of Dallas and Koo of Atlanta. Atlanta had a lot of field goals last year. Koo was really good with them last year. So we are going to take Koo because he was putting up very good numbers with Atlanta toward the end of last season. You could have went with Fairbath because Dallas does have a solid offense, but I do think that Atlanta has a faster paced offense than Dallas does. All right, guys, so that is the end of the draft. Now it is time for the best part. We are going to be giving out grades to every single team. So to start, the first overall pick team at quarterback, Deshaun Watson, he's solid. Christian McCaffrey, I like that, but Mark Ingram is not the best RB2. Raheem Mostert to back him up is a little bit risky. I don't like that very much. And Carrion Johnson as his fourth running back and the only bench running back is very risky. I think this running back core is extremely risky and could easily be a huge problem. And his wide receiving core is not anything special. Adam Thielen and Tyler Boyd are fine, but they're nothing crazy. They're nothing outstanding. Darius Slayton, Ruggs, and Sammy Watkins, in addition to John Brown, is a decent bench, but nothing crazy at the wide receiver position. Travis Kelsey, obviously very, very good. He is the best tight end in the league, but there is not an incredible amount of elite wide receivers on this team. His quarterback isn't Patrick Mahomes. So for that reason, I don't think that anything makes up for the lack of a true solid RB2. But at the end of the day, Mark Ingram still is decently safe. And even though J.K. Dobbins is there, I do think that he'll at least get the job done. And even though I think that the running back core on this team isn't that good, at the end of the day, it will get the job done. But I don't think there's anything super, super special about this team other than Travis Kelsey. And for that reason, I will give this team a C plus. Next up, we have the second overall team. To start out, Lamar Jackson, obviously very, very good. Saquon, very, very good as well. So that start, the first two players on this team, is tremendous. But Tevin Coleman, as his RB2, with the only other running back on this team being Boston Scott, is horrendous. There is not an RB2 that I feel comfortable starting on this team, and there's only a total of three running backs. So this is an extremely, extremely risky team. And the wide receivers isn't anything crazy. I like Calvin Ridley, but Kenny Galladay and Calvin Ridley 
is nothing extraordinary. And T.Y. Hilton is a decent flex. I'd rather have Michael Gallup in there, to be honest. But Deontay Johnson, Crowder, and Deshaun Jackson, and Curtis Samuel is a solid bench. This team has some solid wide receiver depth, but no running back depth at all. And Mark Andrews is solid, but not the best there is. Nothing makes up for the lack of running back depth for his RB2, and that is really, really going to hurt him. For that reason, I'm going to give this team a D. Next up is the third overall pick team. To start out, Aaron Rodgers, he'll get the job done. No worries there. Zeke and Le'Veon Bell as his running backs. This is a very, very good running back duo right here. Zeke, one of the best there is. And Le'Veon Bell was solid last season. He was an RB2 with an awful team, an awful offensive line, and a pretty bad quarterback. All those three things that I just said should be better going into this season than they were last season. Le'Veon Bell is pretty safe. Hopkins and Woods is a very good wide receiver duo. I'm not a huge fan of Hopkins where he's going, but this team got him a little later than he normally goes. Darren Waller, top tight end, love that right there. Devin Singletary and Devontae Parker competing for that flex spot is very, very strong. Damian Williams and Chase Edmonds are both relying on an injury to the starting running back on their respective teams, but they both have potential to be an RB1 if they ever do start. Hunter Henry is a backup tight end, very, very solid there. Baker has potential to be a top five quarterback, and he's this guy's backup quarterback, so I think that is very good. And Hunter Renfro, just as a depth piece, I like that as well. This team doesn't have any holes in his entire roster, and a great combination of some risk with a solid floor. For that reason, this team gets an A. Now we are going to skip my team, the fourth overall pick team. We will do that at the very end. We're gonna to go to the fifth overall pick team, and we're gonna start out with Kyler Murray, very, very good top five quarterback in my rankings. Dalvin Cook, Leonard Fournette at running back. Those guys are pretty solid. I'm assuming that Cook is gonna play and start the season out with the Minnesota Vikings playing week one. And as long as that's the case, this is a solid running back core. Nothing special. Leonard Fournette is pretty risky, but nonetheless, he does have some upside for sure. And as long as Cook and Fournette stay healthy for the majority of the season, it should be a pretty good running back duo. Godwin and Allen Robinson are very, very good. I like both of them. They both could finish as wide receiver ones, so I do like this guy's wide receivers. Tyler Higby at tight end, very, very solid. I really like him. Tyler Lockett at his flex. He is a very, very safe player. DK Metcalf may emerge as a star, but Tyler Lockett will still have a solid role in this offense. Matt Breida, Alexander Madison, Latavius Murray, Sterling Shepard, I like all of them. Good mix of safety with Shepard and Matt Breida, and a little bit of risk with Murray and Madison. Anthony Miller, AJ Dillon, kind of irrelevant, but no worries there. Overall, this team is solid. I give this team a B. Now we have the sixth overall pick team. To start out, Russell Wilson gets the job done. Probably one of the better starting quarterbacks in fantasy football, but his running back core, Todd Gurley and Cam Akers, I do not like that at all. I don't like Todd Gurley's 80-year-old knee being my starting running back. And Cam Akers as my RB2 to back up Todd Gurley is really, really, really bad. Yes, he makes up for it with his wide receivers, Mike Evans, Michael Thomas, and DJ Shark. Very, very good. But his tight end, Evan Ingram, is injury prone. And even though, sure, he has Noah Fant to back him up, Noah Fant is a little risky. I like him, but he does have some risk. Sure, this team has a lot of receivers that he could trade to get a better running back or multiple running backs if this were a real league, but I'm just going to grade these teams purely based on the draft and assume that this is their final roster. Nothing makes up for the lack of running back depth on this team, so for that reason, I am going to give this team a D. Next up, the seventh overall pick team. To start out, he paired Patrick Mahomes with CEH. I think that's a pretty good pairing but he used his first round pick on Patrick Mahomes, which is too early. His RB2 is a risky Melvin Gordon in a very crowded backfield. I don't really like that, especially with his wide receiver one being risky AJ Brown. He does have safe Jarvis Landry to back him up, but his flex is David Montgomery, who I like, but admittedly is a little risky. Hayden Hurst as his tight end. I think he took him too early in the sixth round. That is way too early. He reached for him and Hayden Hurst is just an average starting tight end. In my opinion, he is very, very risky, could pay off, but also 
might completely bust. His bench is below average. I don't like Judy. I don't like Lindsey. Hardman is okay. Hooper is below average in my opinion. I think he usually gets overdrafted. And Burrow and Evans are pretty meh. So overall, this team does have a mix of upside with a solid floor, which normally I like, but I just don't like the players that this team got. I like Mahomes and CEH being paired up together, but the rest of the team is very met, in my opinion. For that reason, I'm going to give this team a C-. This team, the Seahawks fan, is the 8th overall pick team to start out. Carson Wentz at quarterback, I think that's fine. He's definitely not one of the better fantasy quarterbacks, but honestly, after the top four, everyone's pretty much the same, so Wentz will get the job done. I don't like Joe Mixon as much as other people do, but when you pair him up with Miles Sanders, I think that is a very, very good running back duo right there. But Odell Beckham as his wide receiver one is extremely risky. I don't like that at all. I think DK Metcalf as his wide receiver two is okay. And Johnny Smith as a starting tight end is okay. But none of those guys really stand out to me. Cortland Sutton is very talented, but in a very, very crowded, not only backfield in Denver, but also a lot of great weapons. Then this team's bench, Brandon Cooks, Marlon Mack, and Brian Edwards are very overdrafted in my opinion. Henderson, CeeDee Lamb, and Jordan Howard have some potential in my opinion. I think CeeDee Lamb is in a great situation. Henderson could get some snaps on this team. It really depends how Cam Akers turns out. Henderson's risky. I don't think he should have been taken with the ninth pick, but Henderson still does have a little bit of upside, I guess. If Matt Breda goes down, then Jordan Howard certainly is an RB2. So there is a little bit of potential with Jordan Howard, but overall, I'm not a huge fan of this team. I like Joe Mixon and Miles Sanders, but the wide receivers aren't great and Johnny Smith isn't anything special. For that reason, this team is getting a C plus. Now we have the ninth overall pick team. He doesn't have a kicker, but I'm just gonna assume that he has an average kicker because kickers are very easy to just pick up off of the waiver wire, so no worries there. We're gonna fill in just a random average kicker into his kicker slot. So Dak Prescott, James Conner, Sonny Michelle. I like Dak Prescott, but James Conner and Sonny Michelle are very risky. They both have an extensive injury history and they're not in the best situations. They all have some competition. Tyreek Hill, Julio Jones is a very good receiving core, but I think a good running back core is so much more valuable than a good receiving core. Amari Cooper is very overdrafted in my opinion. In the sort of early fourth round, he got him for lower than he normally goes, but still, I'm not a huge fan of Amari Cooper. Zach Ertz is safe, but he doesn't really have top two tight end potential, so he's nothing extraordinary in my opinion and this bench is pretty underwhelming besides Tariq Cohen all these guys are not really going to do that great in my opinion none of these guys have that much potential Emmanuel Sanders is definitely not going to get too many targets with Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas there Gibson is in a very crowded backfield Duke Johnson not a fan of him same with Preston Williams Preston Williams tore his ACL in the middle of the season Mike Williams and Giovanni Bernard they're just gonna face a lot of competition. So overall, this team is very risky. Yes, Tyree Cole and Julio Jones are solid, but the lack of running backs here is really going to hurt this team. Overall, I give this team a C minus, but almost at a D plus. Now we have the 10th overall pick team. To start out, Drew Brees, he'll get the job done. No worries there. Derrick Henry, love him. Think he's really, really solid. Kenyon Drake, I think, is normally being overdrafted, but as this guy's RB2, I think he definitely has some risk, but his floor still is there. And when you combine his upside with David Johnson, there's a good chance one of them absolutely breaks out. So I do think that even though there is some risk there, it might be worth it, especially because he also has Ronald Jones to provide a little bit of a safety net. I think it definitely is Ronald Jones's backfield. So I think that this team did a very nice job of combining some risk with a solid floor. At wide receiver, I love DJ Moore, but AJ Green is risky. I don't like that pick, and same with Gronk, but at least he does have Jarwin to back up Gronk, or I personally think that Jarwin will end up starting over Gronk at some point, but we'll see what happens there. And then Locke, Ayuk, Kirk, and Will Fuller, that's a good combination of 
some safety with Christian Kirk and Drew Locke, and a little bit of risk with Ayuk and Will Fuller. Overall, I think this team did a great job of balancing risk and a little bit of a solid floor, and this team certainly has a ton of potential. They are a contender. I am going to give this team a B plus, but this team certainly could be pretty bad if Kenyon Drake and David Johnson both bust, which there is a possibility of that happening. Next up, Team Lamar Goat at the 11th overall pick. He doesn't have Lamar Jackson, but he has Josh Allen, who I am pretty high on, so I think that's good. He has Austin Eckler as his RB1. That's fine. Jonathan Taylor doesn't have that much potential if Marlon Mack stays healthy for the majority of the season, so I think that Jonathan Taylor doesn't have that much upside, but when pairing him with DeAndre Swift and J.K. Dobbins, if Mark Ingram, Carrion Johnson, or Marlon Mack goes down, if any of them go down, then one of these rookie running backs, who are all very talented, one of them will be a borderline RB1. And I think that this team, like the last team, did a great job of balancing some risk with still a solid floor. Devontae Adams, love him. Keenan Allen, solid player. Mike Gusecki, he gets the job done. And the bench on this team is really, really good. Marquise Brown, Debo Samuel, assuming Debo Samuel actually plays for the majority of the season, and Golden Tate. I like them all. Naheem Hines and Jack Doyle, not a big fan of them, but that's okay. I still like the majority of this team's bench. Overall, just like last team, I think that this team did a great job of balancing some risk with a solid floor. For that reason, I'm going to give this team a B plus. At the 12th overall pick, we have a team with Tom Brady as his quarterback. That's fine. He'll get the job done a really, really good running back core with Josh Jacobs and Nick Chubb and Chris Carson. I'm not as big on Nick Chubb as most people are, but as an RB2, I absolutely love him there. And Chris Carson at his flex is really, really solid. Not to mention his wide receiver depth, Cooper Cup and Terry McLaurin. Love that. I think they absolutely get the job done and both have potential to be wide receiver ones. Jared Cook at his tight end, little risky, but he has TJ Hawkinson to back him up. So I think that he'll be a solid backup. Rieger, Nikhil Harry, both really, really solid backup wide receivers who both have a lot of potential. James White is a very safe running back. He's definitely going to be used in this offense. I don't like Keyshawn Vaughn because I think it definitely is Ronald Jones' backfield. But aside from him, I really like this team's bench. Not a huge fan of Pollard either, but aside from Vaughn and Pollard, I like this team's bench. This team did a great job of really getting some solid players who have floors, but where their ceiling is incredibly high. I think this team is phenomenal. They are between an A- minus and an A for me. I'm going to give this team an A because I really love the players that this team took. And just like the team with the missing kicker, we're going to assume that this team just has an average defense. So this team gets an A. I really love them. And last but certainly not least, we have my team. So to start off, Matthew Stafford, he is very underrated. I think he is going to certainly be a top 12 quarterback this upcoming season. I really, really like him and I'm excited to see what he does this season. Kamara and Aaron Jones, really, really good running back duo. Absolutely love them being at the core of my team. Juju as my wide receiver one, I think he's fine. He has a lot of potential for sure. We've seen him produce at such a high level. In 2018, why can't he do it again in 2020? Stephon Diggs, this is the part where I really messed up on my draft. I should have taken Michael Gallup or Tyler Boyd earlier because I really, really wanted them at my wide receiver two position. I didn't want to have to take Diggs there, but I did end up taking him, and I certainly regret not taking my wide receiver two earlier, knowing that these people do know who I like and therefore will probably be taking some players who I like. George Kittle at my tight end, love that. Pretty much guaranteed to be a top three tight end. Kareem Hunt as my flex, he has a weekly floor of pretty much 10 points because the Browns like to use him. And if Nick Chubb ever goes down, he is an instant RB1 for sure. I love my bench. Darius Geis, he is risky, but he has a ton of potential. Marvin Jones has a solid floor, but could be a borderline wide receiver one. Julian Edelman is just a very, very safe player. He's always been used, and that's not going to change. Pittman and Carlos Hyde, pretty risky, but what do you expect from such late-round picks? And then Goddard is just a solid player to 
provide some depth, possibly even make my flex maybe for a week or two and just be there in case Kittle goes down or during Kittle's bye week. So overall, I really messed up with my wide receiver too. I would like a better one, but aside from that, I do think that my team is really, really good. So I'm debating between an A- and an A, but that wide receiver two position being so weak in my opinion and being extremely risky in Stephon Diggs makes my team an A-. minus. So guys, I hope you enjoyed those breakdowns. And if you want to be in one of my future mock drafts, all you have to do, subscribe to my channel right here and follow me on Twitter. And once you see me saying that the first 11, the first nine, the first 13 people, how many ever it is, those people to DM me, make sure that you are one of them and you are super quick to DMing me because if you are, then you can secure your spot in one of these mock drafts in the future. With that being said, guys, I really, really hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit that subscribe button and especially hit the like button because it really does help me. And I also wanna know what you guys thought of all these teams. So in the comments below, let me know which team you think was the best. I told you my opinion. Let me know what your opinion is. Do you agree with me? Or do you think that there was a different team that is going under the radar in my books and that you think is actually the best team in this draft? Let me know, guys. I'm really curious, and I will see you next time. Peace.